and if you hit problems, your alternative is probably to actually run through the, the forms uh, migration to actually get grade to 10G and then run the forms to XML utility. Um, it will also convert across your PL SQL libraries to a PLD.txt file. Um, and that's a utility in the forms builder you can do to, to achieve that. Um, whilst you, it will convert them across, the functionality that's in your, your PLLs will not be automatically migrated. It's something you will have to apply manually uh, once you actually do the, the, the rest of the migration. However, by doing that and uploading it, you will have that logic available to you to be re-implemented within the Apex environment. Similarly with Oracle Reports, if you've got a forms application, you'll have Oracle Reports no doubt. And again, we can actually convert across RDF files or indeed .rex or, or forms, JSP files, um, to XML as well. And again, that's a utility in Reports Builder that will help you do that. So having got all of our XML type or text-based artifacts, uh, now turn, let's turn to Application Express. And we're not doing anything really special in Apex here. It is the same as any other Apex project. You'll create a workspace and add your users. Um, because we now, well, you have got an existing forms application, uh, unlike a start from scratch Apex project, you're not going to go through and, well, there's no point going through and defining all of your tables and, and database objects. These already exist. So typically what you would do is either do an export-import from your existing schema that Forms is pointing at, or there is the option to actually associate the, the Apex workspace with that existing schema. If you do that, I would suggest that is your uh, test or dev schema rather than live. Um, however, uh, it is feasible to actually do that. So once you've got your workspace in, you create a specific project of a... Uh, conversion project of the type forms to Apex migration, and there's an option within the menus to do that. And at that point, Apex will go away, chunter along in the background, and create all of the environmental uh, stuff that is required. So once we have that conversion project, the next thing to do is to upload the objects that we have um, converted to XML from forms, uh, PL SQL libraries, and reports. Uh, and again, that's a simple little wizard. You just go through this a number of times and browse and pick up the XML and text files that you have created. As I say, you should load all of the source files, uh, not just the, the FMB and RDF representations. You've got the ULBs, the MMBs, the, the PLLs. Um, they can't all be generated, but once you get them into the Apex environment, there are various things that you can use here that will help you to ease that, the, the conversion process. It will also mean that uh, any developers that are working on this don't need to switch between the two environments. They can actually interrogate this information within Apex, don't have to go back to their forms development environment. And you can actually take new developers here, people that have never known forms, don't know how to actually navigate around that environment, and have them working on the conversion uh, exercise. People that are just familiar with Apex itself with a bit of PL SQL and SQL. The reason for taking all of the, the artifacts in is that uh, part of the, the Apex conversion tool is a feature called annotation, whereby we, you can um, record against all of the, the artifacts that are there the need as to whether they, they need to be converted, as I say, keeping track of the scope of the conversion project and also um, whether they have been converted progress as you go through those processes. So what actually happens to your, your different um, forms artifacts? Well, typically the blocks in a form will uh, be converted into an Apex equivalent functionality. So forms become interactive report and forms in Apex, and those can be master detail or tabular type. Items, again, there are equivalents within Apex for, for date pickers, HTML editors, checkboxes, all of those things you can see there. And RDF files, or the report outputs, will become Apex interactive reports. So the next step, once all of these artifacts are in there, is to have a look at what has been uploaded. Now, for this function, you can actually use uh, a lot of the, the good reporting functionality in Apex. Apex is built, built with Apex, so the functionality is available to you there, to actually look at 
review, categorize, select um, in logical groupings if you've got a large project, all of the items that are encompassed within the conversion project. And then you'll assign people to uh, go through that. First thing to do is to decide whether it is within the scope, any given object uh, at the sort of form level. Am I interested in actually doing this? And within that, at the block level, are, do I need to convert any and all of these blocks? And you can include or exclude any of these from the project. As you do this within this annotation function, that will actually keep a running track of the number of program units you've got to work on and, and manage that for you. The same is true that when you get below the block, block level down to the item level, again, there you can actually select and deselect any individual item on a form as to whether it's going to migrate across. And again, that will update your progresses. You'll also do things like uh, look at and review perhaps the SQL queries that's underneath your blocks. You'll be able to actually enhance those. Um, do things like reviewing prompts on items. The annotation also, as you're going through this, allows you to put in your, your notes uh, of what needs to be done, either as part of the, 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 the Apex migration itself or subsequently. Uh, and you can then assign those uh, tasks to other people, other Apex developers on the project. Uh, thing, do things as well like putting tags on there. So if you're actually looking for tasks of a particular type that you want to assign, you'll see there you can put tags in like a validation tag and, and wrap those up into some, uh, a sub-project within the conversion. Once you have done all of that, and again, how onerous that is will depend on how large a forms application it is that you are taking across. It is a very simple thing to just press the button and generate an Apex application. That is the, the silver bullet part. Um, and you'll get this little summary page up just to confirm everything that's going to happen. And you go to, to, at this point, you'll be able to do things like apply themes, page icons, um, things like that that you would normally do in Apex. And then, as if by magic, you have an application that will run. However, that's not, unfortunately, the end of the task. As I say, that will give you the basic user interface, the navigation, and um, um, capabilities of forms. However, there are things that won't go across, um, and uh, you do need to do these as post-migration tasks. So things we're talking about here are things like the, the PL SQL, the triggers, the PL SQL libraries, the program units. Uh, and as I say, that, that if you've taken the artifacts across, are available to you in the Apex environment, and you can actually re-implement them relatively easily and quickly uh, there. User interface stuff um, is where you actually maybe want to start doing some Apex-specific things, the, the clever and pretty things that Apex can do, put in your themes, regions, items, add JavaScript, do Ajax type things, enhance that application. So you can actually add business value to, to the project as well. And I say, through all of this, we have this annotation capability so you can keep track and control of the project uh, and see progress as it uh, goes through. So that was a, a quick run through, in principle, how you actually do this. Um, there are some good resources available to you on the, the web. Um, I would recommend the Oracle by example, and the link is actually on the screen there. No need to uh, scribble that down, as we will send uh, these slides out to you at the end of the, the webcast. Uh, the Forms to Apex documentation is also uh, very useful, and that gives you the, uh, all the, the ideas behind which buttons do what. OK, at that point then, uh, that's the idea. That's the principle. Um, got a couple of questions there. I'll answer just now. Apex, can Apex be used on an e-commerce website? Yes, there's no reason why not to. Um, the main challenge on e-commerce, obviously, is security. Um, things like PCI, you need to, need to come into consideration. Um, Apex is a very valid um, technology for doing that, but there are wider considerations around, around say, the security environment. But Apex will fit into that type of world. Um, right, on that point then, I shall pass back to Dermot, uh, and he'll talk you through the experiences that uh, um, InnoApps have come across in the, the, uh, doing these projects so far. 
Thank you, Alistair. Um, so what I'd like to do now is, is take some of the theory that Alistair's gone through there and just put a little bit of real world on that. 